As I'm going through this class, I find that even though our department is industrial and systems engineering, that even my thought process and how I'm starting to view things change. But I find myself at some difficulty because I can understand the structure around systems, but I want to be able to grasp my hands and be able to do something just like your case study. And it's not limited to a, a set of things that you have a set of large set of tools that allows you to cover this. So one of the weaknesses I thought is that I have, that I have, and therefore what I did is, based on what I told you, is I developed something. Again, it looks after I thought it was brilliant, after I put it on a piece of paper, not so brilliant. Because it didn't show up exactly the way I want, but I hope that I can walk you through. And I came up with this idea that people are not abstract thinkers. People are tactical in the sense that they see something, there's mechanical, one, two, three, four, five, and then you can get them. There's very few people that I have seen that can be a Picasso and just do something. Many people, because it is new to them, it is by art by numbers. You paint yellow here and you paint red here and that kind of stuff. But I think that's okay because if you do it by numbers, then over a period of time, it becomes second nature to you. So what I did is, we talked about this yesterday that one of the most important things in lean systems, even though it's not the greatest tool, it is actually a very simplistic tool, is the idea of mapping. So here's an idea that started. So I have lean, and in order for me to visualize how to implement lean, I use something called value string map. And somehow, this map that I create comes back and tells me what I need to do with lean. I find that this is very simplistic in its nature, but it provides that structure of thinking. So I said, OK, if that's of all the tools that you have available to you, I want to set up a simplistic way of doing this same thing, but for systems. So I want to do something, and I don't know what we're going to call this, that I can visualize something, and then it allows me to tell me what I need to do to improve that system's concept. So I started with this idea, and you tell me if this is true or not. Remember the emergency room? Not that you can see this. Okay. This is pretty much a value stream map. And the value stream map is limited in its abilities. So what does it do? I got a box. An ambulance comes in. I have an examination room. I have some testing that I've done. I come back into the examination room, and I get discharged. 
we could add more boxes and say, okay, I come in, I register, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. But in essence, what does a value stream map do for you? What is the purpose of lean? What is lean supposed to do for you? Reduce waste. Great. <coughs> we have three principles. Reduce waste is correct. What we do is reduce cycle time, reduce variation, and improve the quality of life. These are the three principles, and I look at these numbers right here, and I come back here, down here, and it does some calculations, and it tells me the total value added time over to the total process time, total non-value added time over total process time. So it gives me a level of efficiency associated with that process. It tells me what that cycle time is, and it tells me a level of efficiency. But it's not so accurate. <coughs> so this is what you learned last week. So I said, okay, let's start with this concept. Right. And I said, if I was to do it, <coughs> here's the way I would do it. I would come back on top of this. This is my visualization, so I don't want to lose this. I, this is my visualization. So on top of this, what I did is I said, well, at a, and I called it a strategic level. You can call it whatever you want. At a strategic level, what is my goal for that emergency room? And it can't be as simple as one thing. Right? It could be multiple things, but as an example, I put in what? Revenue. Do you think that's fair? That the key concept is to be able to enhance revenue. We presented last week to the Tennessee Hospital Association, and guess how many hospitals have gone out of business in Tennessee. Just make a guess. <coughs> 50. More than you can count. All of the hospitals in the rural areas are in desperate need at this moment because they are closing one at a time. And I believe in the last year or so, there's at least been six or seven closing of hospitals. If you look at inner city hospitals, they are in def very difficult conditions and they're closing. And I saw the study that in the next 20 years, a large percentage, I can't remember, was it 25, 30, 40 percent of all the existing hospitals are going to close. We had one, I think four or five years ago, uh, off of uh, Chapman Highway. Baptist Hospital, it closed. So, I started looking at this idea of revenue, realizing that there are many other things that I can take a look at, such as the quality of patient care and so forth down the line. And I look at this, and I try to make it very simplistic at this moment, because I want to present the idea to you that in order to do that, I can look at the efficiency of pa patient care, and I can look at the reputation of that hospital, if the reputation is gonna be, allow me to get a lot of people in, and this efficiency will allow me to get a lot of people out. Not necessarily the only things that I can balance, but those are examples of things. Even at this stage, do you see a conflict? And I mean, we're not done. I mean, we, I have about 14, 15 other slides. But do you see at the strategic level a conflict? What conflict do you see at this moment? It costs an investment in revenue to provide quality patient care and to keep your reputation high enough to draw new patients. Okay. So, and I'm not saying that it is necessarily the case, but if I told you your responsibility is efficiency of patient care, watch this. 
See this right here, efficiency of patient care? Do you see this? Could there possibly be a conflict? Do you see this? Is there possibly a conflict? <clears throat> Already there exists, at this moment, a conflict in that system. And the thing that it tells me is, over the last year, we have been talking about institutionalization. What does institutionalization mean? It means you go into a particular system <coughs> and you start behaving according to that system. <coughs> Carla and I have talked many times that we are so similar, yet if you look at an ORL, ORNL employee, a Y12 employee, or a UT employee, in itself, they each have a specific characteristics. Not good or bad, but who caused that? If we live in the same society, we live in the same neighborhoods, our kids go to the same schools, how is it possible that we have different ways of thinking? Who created that? The system, and not necessarily these institutions, there are many other systems that create those values, but I'm just simplifying it, I'm saying that if that is what we do, is it true that even though we all live in Oak Ridge or Knoxville or wherever it is, our kids go to the same school, we behave the same way outside, that we behave at work differently because of that system. Now, I then came back and I said, I'm going to use that value stream mapping. Again, the reason I don't like these slides is because it didn't do it in the way I wanted to do it. And I could not finagle and make it, because I wanted to have swim lanes and all that kind of stuff. It just didn't. And I said, from a strategic level to an operational level, if I use this as a basis of operations, if we said, oh my God, this company is a lean company, or whatever. Then I have, in this particular case, my stock <coughs> is cycle time, or time in the system. And I have time of patient arrival, I have time in a patient, I've discharged the patient, and I have that particular stock called time in the system. Notice, majority of us, Do not consider this. As engineers and technical people, this is not what we consider. So if I took all of this out, In the middle of my lecture, <laughs> <laughs> Murphy is alive and well. That's all right. That's all right. I had a I had a question about when you when you were talking about the relationship between you know the reputation and uh, efficiency. That doesn't necessarily have to be a conflict. No, that no, could be. No, that's true. That could be what actually makes your reputation. I think it could make your reputation. It is dependent upon how you implement it, who does it, and if that organization is integrated. If all I said was your job is what efficiency, would you care about anything else? No. Usually, it's in conflict because we're a capital society. <coughs> I have been delinquent in educating you 
for providing the information because we start industrial engineering from what perspective? Or, or an operational perspective, don't we? And we forget this idea that all of operations has to be connected to what? Whatever the mission of that organization is. And we take this thing and we start looking into the idea that is linked. We had this, again, the presentation that we had with the Top Tennessee Hospital Associate, and these are all people from around the state that came in and these are operational excellence or lean people that are improving hospitals. You know what their goal is? And this is what the sad part of life is. You know what was their goal? Not to implement lean. Oh my God. And, the, and, our, and, and we were talking and I said the, my presentation was, who said that lean is a job? You either improve the quality of life, you reduce the cost of services, you impact society, and a tool within that is lean and operations research and all of that other stuff. But those serve as subservient to what? Some higher goal. And where we are delinquent in our education is we don't ever communicate that. And those, that, to some extent, when I was looking at yesterday, those goals, those missions, those things that we need to accomplish, give me another word for it. Are the basis of what? Your requirements. Are we there? I believe so, sir. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I find very interesting that if this is true, again, remember, this is a simplified example. But I want, it does a very good job of illustrating the misalignment and mis, the disjoint in organizations. Watch this. How many people here at ORNL or Y12 or Rubbermaid or UT? care about the organizational mission. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody Ask me. I know I'm on camera. So <laughs> I just want to know if I'm fired from UT, some one of you has to hire me. <laughs> what is a goal? What is a goal at UT? Make money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Raise tuition. <laughs> 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 to win football uh, games. Yeah. 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 yeah, championship is there. Yeah, okay. Top, 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 top 25. It's top 25. Everything they talk about is top 25. In education or? Overall, <laughs> as a reputation uh, of the thing, the ranking of the university should be a top 25. Yeah. <laughs> We are, depending on what you look at, if you look at certain universities, public universities, or all universities, we're either ranked in the 40s or in the 60s. And that hasn't changed in all of the years that I've been here. That's an, we go up three, we go down two, we go up one, we go up three. It has not significantly changed. Why do you think it's not changed? Because everybody else is trying to do the same. One is everybody else is nobody standing still, so everybody's moving. But the two, it, it does not connect to me in terms of what I'm doing. It's because the system's rigged. You, you, you guys are all systems rigged. rigged. What did she say? <laughs> <laughs> we are the systems rigged. <laughs> you see, what I do, I never think about top 25. I never have that relationship to talk about. <coughs> I just know that I have to grow my research, I have to grow the educational programs, and I have to grow the outreach. And we're trying to do that. But have I ever connected it to the mission of the goal? I don't particularly care. Because I, it is over a period of time, because it has been irrelevant, because it seems to be an artificial thing 
that is, is not something that we actually try to shoot for. So now that is, make sure that we erase the tape. <laughs> All right. So I brought it down one more level. And I started to look at it from, and all of this is to set up our analysis. And again, I said, well, what happens in this value stream? If I am to look at it, I have a registration, I have a waiting area, I have a triage, I have a waiting area, I have medical exams, I have a discharge, or admissions to the hospital or the discharge. And I'm not sure that these, these are correct, but I said, okay, for example, in registration, <coughs> the thing that we look for is accurate gathering of information such as insurance-related information. The accurate ability to understand who is critically ill and needs immediate attention and who's not. That's what these two say. I come over here, Okay. in the waiting area, and I'm not, I don't know, know that anybody's in charge of the waiting area, customer flow and customer satisfaction. I come to the triage and I'm gathering accurate medical, complete and accurate medical information, and I'm identifying and performing relevant tests. I come here, customer satisfaction, customer flow, I come back here to the medical thing, correct diagnosis, identify additional tests, and correct disposition. And then in discharge, correct charges and uh, admission, correct, accurate and efficient uh, admission. I'm trying to think to myself, and I make this, this thing, this assumption, which is not completely true, that people here and people here and people here and people here have different supervisors. And each of these areas is measured in their performances on a particular thing. Now, so I start to look at this. And then, does that have something to do with this? Does this have something to do with this? It, it provides for you, and I'm going to then add one more, if you don't mind, and then we'll talk about this idea of analysis. So then I came back and I said, the people that are in there, that are working, what motivates them, what drives them? And I, I copied and pasted it all there. This is not, I, I copied the wrong thing. Performance evaluation, that's what this should have said. Quality of my life. <coughs> value and growth within that organization. Am I feeling value if I'm growing in that environment? Is how is my quality of life? And by the way, at the end of the year, I have that performance evaluation. I have now this system, and again, this is simplified. I wanted to show you the complexity of a system. I've simplified it to the best of my ability, but I wanted to make sure that you understood here that I could have broken this down into many more levels if I wanted to, but I have individuals, I have departments, I have operations, I have strategic. Just through this simple example, what do you see? Well, your individuals aren't necessarily aligning with your strategic goals, right? They're aligning with their own goals. All right. So, we can do this analysis many, many ways, <coughs> right? But for simplicity purposes, I said, what if I looked at it from a vertical alignment. So how is 
I, I picked up the wrong one, the waiting area. If somebody was in charge of the waiting area, what drives them? What is it that we're trying to do in this waiting area? How does this apply to the operations of that emergency room? And how does it fit into the thing? Do you find that there is a misalignment? waiting room is usually not efficient at all for, for us, for people well, in there. And I picked the wrong one because I don't know of anybody that says, I'm in charge of the waiting room. There's no <laughs> department that's in charge of the waiting room, you just sit there. I should have picked something like medical exam or triage or something like that. Yeah. The all medical right. exam makes sense because you're, you're worried about your diagnosis, you're worried about tests, correct, figuring out the right thing to do, which is exactly opposite of time in, in the system. Could be. We don't know. Could be. <coughs> but I looked at it from this perspective. I don't know <coughs> if this was true and if all organizations to some extent showed this. I do not know how organizations survive because I find a tremendous misalignment between each of these areas. So what I was going to do was, at each of these, I would have what I called a DNA. The DNA of an organization. And uh, you can see that uh, out of my visuals, that didn't come out. So I have many DNA strands. I have all of these DNA strands. And if I looked at the alignment vertically on the DNA strands, I would find that there is a fair amount of what? Misalignment. Now, I want to show you one more thing. I could take every one of these at a horizontal because a hospital is just not an emergency room, it has all of these other areas. But if I did take the emergency room, what do you think is happening here? What is the goal of that system? The goal is I am, I'm not sure what I'm doing gathering the right information, I'm gathering the right information, I'm performing the test, I'm performing the right diagnosis, I am doing additional tests, uh, uh, correct disposition, and I'm getting people out. <coughs> Let's assume each of those supervisors is measured by that. What is the goal of that system? Increase those stocks. I can hear you. To increase those stocks. I mean, again, each of these stocks. Again, we're going to come back because I I did not know how to put the uh, the loops around them. But at this moment, I don't get a sense that what I am trying to do here is aligned with here. I, it is about accuracy, if, if I'm correct, and first of all, I'm not sure that I'm correct. If it's the accuracy of insurance, the accuracy of the tests, the accuracy of the medical uh, information that you collect, the accuracy of what? The diagnosis, the accuracy of the disposition, the accuracy of all of that, are we not focused on quality of patient care? I mean, according to what I put there, I'm not sure that that is true. <coughs> is that not what you get out of this? So if I have an increase in the quality of patient care, what does that do to me? What have I just done on the top one? I have got a better reputation where more people would want to go, so I have opened up what? What loop? 
the reinforcing yin. Okay? What have I done at all to the efficiency of flow? Not much. So I have higher waiting times. Because I have higher waiting times, my income per patient that I charge, that I can charge to the insurance companies, goes from here to here, and I've just reduced my revenues. Let me repeat that one more time. If that is the case, I mean, this is, I'm not saying that any one of those things is a wrong thing to do, but it seems like this is a colony of ants, where ants know how to follow each other. Here, it is like nobody follows each other. So, I have, and I'm not sure my logic is correct, I simply want to show you, I want to make sure that you understand. If I increase the quality of patient care, which seems to be what I'm doing, that means that these things must be in play, because if these are not in play, then people don't do those things. But let's assume those are in play. I say, oh my God, great, great quality of care. What would you do if a, a hospital had a great reputation of great quality of care? Would you go or not go to that? <clears throat> so what am I doing? What do I do here? The reputation, if this is correct, will allow you to have more people go into that system. What is the revenues based on? Number of people. So I got a lot of people there. But more than now, not number of people, but what? What the insurance won't say, right? Performance, pay for value or pay for performance? I can't remember the terminology. That if you have in the emergency room more than 170 minutes on the average for all patients, more than that, your income per patient is this. If you are below 130 minutes, your income for the same patient is this. That's the way they're paying. But, Ruth, yeah, they're kind of paying two different ways. Because if they're getting paid for time in, time out, but yet you want to focus on quality, you're also paying on quality. They're paying on quality in the way that if a patient comes back into the emergency room for the same, same thing. one, same thing, and the insurance company says that you should have caught it the first time, they stop you there for your first pay. So quality of care is there. Now, this is where the confusion is for me, is I don't understand this system. So, I mean, could somebody tell me a little bit about this system? Okay. So, The things that we talked about last time, from I think it was chapter five, is policy resistance, success to the successful, tragedy of the commons, drift to low performance, escalation, addiction, will be. I want to understand this not by reading something, I want to understand this by looking at a simplistic map like a value stream map and try to understand it. So, what I'd like to do is I would like you to tell me, number one, what is it, policy resistance? Why would people, so what are the options? Three options that I understood was, do it by force, give up and say, hey, this is not working, so it's okay, you know, you guys resist, so let's not work on it, or try to align. And it says the preferred option is to align. Could you tell me why you think that there would be a policy resistance? Give me a policy. Give me a policy. Make up a policy. Get people in and out as quick as possible. <coughs> Watch this. So to, tomorrow we're going to say 
We're going to go into the emergency room and say, the policy is that we must get people out of here in 130 minutes. I don't know if that's a good policy, but let's assume that's a policy. Tell me, who would resist? See, it's not important that we understand the concept of resistance. I want to know, I want to get to a point where you would be identified ahead of time, proactively, who you think is going to be resistant. The doctor. The medical exam. Tell me who else. Patient. Well, the input side, too. The intake, because they have no control over it. Right? So are you saying that a simplistic visualization of a system <laughs> allows you now the ability to proactively understand a concept and get it to a level where you say, ah, 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 these are the people that are going to resist. So you think the doctors are going to resist? Why? Because they're there for the patient, treating the patient. Time limit on their diagnosis. Yeah. That's not true. They're getting good. No, Can I tell you this? They like to have patient care and they like to be known as excellent doctors. But they are now have reduced incomes. How do you think they are <coughs> making up their incomes? Working in their own volume, mm -hmm. running tests that previously they had not done tests, and charging for tests within their offices. If that's the kind of physician that you are, so you cannot tell me at this moment that the only thing that concerns them is what. I had, a, I had a friend, I cannot tell you who it is, who told me that my income as a psychiatrist has gone down and therefore I just see more patients uh, to make up the, for the volume knowing good and well that I am not going to be able to help. Oh, you say, oh, that's not so noble. But you do the same thing. Don't you? Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> no? Survival. Okay. So we have doctors that are going to resist. Could you tell me who else is going to resist? Patient. Registration. Because if they make a mistake, you're going to say, oh my God, we didn't get paid. Triage? Are they going to resist? Testing, are they going to resist? So I now know ahead of time who possibly is going to resist that policy. We said, I can force my will on you. I can say, let's not do it. Or what is the third? Align. Align that system for me. Align that system. There is your challenge. One is easy to read a concept and say, oh my God, yes, it says align the concept. This is not the most difficult thing. This is the best, I can say, is a very simplified version of a very simplified process. To say something and to do something are two different things. Do you have the ability at this moment to start thinking about how alignment would occur? If you were to redo this again, how would you do it? To redo the whole system from step to step? The key is alignment. If I can align, then I may have reduced policy resistance. Well, for the doctors you would want to communicate to them that by reducing their time they would increase their patients which would increase their revenue or profit. Okay. Or and that would align with the overall goal to get people in and out, if that's your goal. Alright. So maybe by using this and I'm <coughs> trying to improve this because I, am, I don't like this because I want this to be in swim lanes so that you can see all the variety of different organizations that you have to go through. 
and it visualizes for you the differences. Now, so one is this issue of what? Re policy resistance. Now, it's not a concept. You have the ability, if you wanted to, to sit down and analyze who do we anticipate is going to have a policy. Who in your family this weekend is going to uh, is going to be resistant to you go for a hike? Maybe I chose the wrong thing. I don't know. So, so your wife is going to be upset, and your kids are going to be upset. So policy resistance. <laughs> So, what are your three options? Just do it. <laughs> 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 it's not like to do it. Get in the car. <laughs> that's that's the attitude. Right. Or. Can I say? You can say. Can I say? We're not going to go. Okay, let's do something else. Or that's how <coughs> are you going to convince them to go and feel like it's their idea? <laughs> well, don't tell them that they need exercise. We always enjoy looking at the fall leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the best place for you. Oh, tell them that you'll take them shopping. That's what I was going to say. Tell them that you'll take them shopping. Shopping on the way. Fall Coffee. leaves. Coffee on the way. Perfect. Coffee. Dinner. I don't know what it is. But you know how to do this, right? The only thing is, at home, it's extremely simple to see because you've got two, three, four people around. In a system that you're designing, <coughs> you don't know the people, you don't see anything, and it becomes very difficult. Now, let me try one more. Success to the successful was a concept, wasn't it? Was it or not? Analyze this for me. <coughs> If you're a top-rated hospital, you can you'd have have a little bit more of your reputation, which means you'd have the ability that people would be more likely to come to you. Which means you'd have higher staff levels. Means you'd have more people to be able to help push the people through and meet the requirements. So, so at a hospital level, success to the success could work in your favor. Right. Or right. not, like if you're inner city or something, right? You have <coughs> less of a reputation now. And you'd be on the back end of that. You would. And that's the idea of success to the successful is that those people that are born to privilege and money and all that are there. I mean, Nicola and I were looking at it that, what's it, Chelsea Clinton? Got it, came out of uh, college with an income of $600,000 a year, worked for NBC, and is now working for $900,000 a year, or working for the foundation. Excellent credentials. <laughs> Went to Stanford, went to uh, Columbia for a master's, went on to Oxford for another master's, and went to, got a PhD in, uh, at Oxford. How many people do you know that came out of Oxford that start with six hundred to $900,000 income? One. I came out of Oxford. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. That We're not making a judgment. We're saying, do you see that, that same concept? And you can say that, I mean, we're not picking on the Democrats or the Republicans, it exists on both sides, okay? Do you see that here? At the hospital level, success for the success works if we had reputation. Now, who is that system designed for to make successful? I, because it provides me, when I was reading this and trying to put this example together, it provided me an insight that I never had. Who is that system designed to make success? Probably the board of the hospital, right? Stop. Physicians. The whole thing is centered around, if you look at it, the utilization and the convenience of the physician. Is that true or not? 
I mean, you've been to a hospital as much as I have, so you have as much insight into it as it is. Every hospital that I've gone to, every physician's hospital that I've gone to, is set up to make that success, the physician a success. By making a physician a success that brings revenue in, you make the hospital a success. So who are the people that are left out? Everybody else. <coughs> pick on you. You want to talk about why? No. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Tell us. So I have a son who he has a degree, but he he's a mi minimalist and he works to live. He doesn't like to work. So anyway, they have two children now. And um, daycare is really expensive, and he worked for a healthcare system in town for 10 years, and um, he, he quit his job, and he's staying home to take care of his children because it, cost, it would cost him more to put them in daycare than me. And he said, nobody can raise my kids better than I can. His wife's a teacher, and we had some training, and this particular health care facility was invited to participate, and they were complaining about buy-in and engagement of their in-the-trenches employees. And my response was, how do you pay somebody $12 an hour and expect them to be engaged. So it's like you can't want everything and then give something back. So so anyway, Ryan's staying home. This is not a person who the system was designed to make successful. This is what came to me. Who are the people at universities that are supposed to make, be, you know, are the, the recipients of success? Coaches. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> faculty. Why? Because if faculty can bring more money in and more revenue and publish more and do all this kind of stuff, then the university is going to look more. Do they care? Yes, they do. <laughs> but do we design our staff and other people to be successful? Maybe, maybe not. Tell me, at Y12, at ORNL, and at Rubberlay, what is your system designed for? I want you to get that idea, because you have that ability if you want to accept it or to change it. But you have to understand, you work there, but the system may be designed for you to succeed or it may be for somebody else to succeed, but who you have to understand. And then you can do something about it. So who at Whitewell, ORNL, or Rubber Lane is that designed to succeed? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. So I can't tell. But for you to think. It's not for us to guess at this moment, but for you to think. Okay. Here's the key. Could you answer this one question for me? Do you believe that you're in that group? If you are in that group, you will behave one way, and if you're not in that group, you will behave another way. You, I want you to understand, not reading the book, the depth of analysis that you can do in terms of analyzing. Let's go through one more. Tragedy of the Commons. Tell me about tragedy of the commons here. What does tragedy of the commons mean? There's a lot of resources. So that I use a certain resource, and because my cost of using that resource is not that much, right? I continue to use that, but because there's a whole bunch of people that use that resource, that resource may or may not be available in the future because we consume things that may or may not be available over a period of time. Do you see that here? And time would be your resource, right? Time in and out. We could, we could talk about anything. It's, it's ours. 
Nobody is limiting our analysis. We are saying, what is a resource that is being consumed, that people use without understanding the cost of it, that over a period of time may or may not be there? I think the nurses, <clears throat> most of the doctors don't bring their own nurses when the emergency room, they all kind of share, so you have like four or five nurses that have the same number of doctors almost, and they can get overworked pretty easy. The doctors don't really realize that the nurse has other responsibilities with other other doctors. Fair enough. I mean, I was not thinking that way, but I would think that yours is as valid as mine. How many people have been overseas and had the ability to see a hospital <coughs> overseas? Is he one of designed the Red Cross in Mexico. I have the ability to see hospitals in India, in China. We've seen hospitals in Iran, uh, different places. The idea that a hospital here on the average can be compared to a hospital on the average elsewhere is almost non-existent in life. So the resource that we are consuming is what? Money. The amount of money dedicated to a hospital here as compared to any other place that I have seen is just unbelievable. We consume that resource assuming that it is existent for its entirety. Who says that over a period of time, I don't know, 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, 500 years, that we will not have hospitals that look like Mexico? Have you seen a hospital in Mexico? But you never think about it. You go into a hospital and you want everything at your convenience. The physician wants everything at their convenience. The nurse